All right, welcome to lesson 6.4, special parallelograms. Today we're going to learn about some special parallelograms. Before we do that, we're going to do a quick review about uh, what we've learned of parallelograms so far. So I've got a warm up where you need to find A, B, C, and X. It might be a good idea to pause the video and see if you can do those on your own now. All right, A is going to be 110 degrees because in a parallelogram, consecutive angles add to 180. C is also gonna be 110 degrees because in a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal, equal, which means B being opposite of 70 is also gonna be 70 degrees. All right, X. In this parallelogram, we've got this side and this side. In parallelograms, opposite sides are congruent. So those two things should be equal to each other. So to find x, we just set them equal to each other. 5x plus 8 is going to have to be equal to 2x plus 29. Do a little bit of algebra to get x by itself. Uh, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides first so that I don't have x's on this side anymore. When I do that, I'm going to have 3x plus 8 equals 29. To get rid of that plus 8, I am going to subtract 8 on both sides. Then those 8s go away. And I'll get 3x equals 21. And then finally, to get rid of that 3, divide by 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7 x is equal to seven. All right, let's get to today's stuff then. Today we're gonna to learn about some special parallelograms. We're gonna learn about rectangle, rhombi, and squares. Those are all parallelograms. They're just special types of them. You've probably heard of some of these before. I'm guessing you've heard of rectangles. I'm guessing you've heard of squares. Rhombi is the plural for rhombus. You may or may not have heard of that one. We'll talk about it. All right. Here is an example of each. See if you can name which one is which. All right. That one there is a rectangle. A lot of times student, students think that a rectangle is some shape that has opposite sides congruent, uh, but that's not actually a great definition because I can do a picture like this. This is a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent in parallelograms too. That's not what makes a rectangle a rectangle. What makes a rectangle special is the fact that all the angles are 90 degrees. All right, this one here is a rhombus. The thing that makes a rhombus special is all the sides are the exact same length. All right, and the last one, that's a square. A square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. A square is special because it has all sides the same length and all angles 90 degrees. So a square is actually a specific type of rectangle. It's a rectangle whose sides are all the same. A square is also a specific type of rhombus. It's a rhombus whose all, all angles are 90. So square, all squares are both rectangles and rhombuses. It's just a special type, it's those two shapes combined into one. All right, so here's some definitions we should write down. Rectangles, the definition of a rectangle is that all angles are congruent or all angles are 90 degrees. A rectangle does have some special properties. Uh, since it is a parallelogram, it's gonna have all the same properties of parallelogram opposite sides congruent, uh, diagonals bisecting each other, all of those things. Plus it's got one additional special property, the diagonals are going to be congruent. So if I drew in this diagonal and that diagonal, those diagonals are going to be the same length. In construction, that's actually how they try to make sure that doorways are perfectly rectangular. When they make a doorway in, or a window, in construction, to make sure it's a rectangle, they'll measure the diagonals. If the diagonals are the same length, they know that they've made a perfect rectangle. If they're not the same length, they know they need to do a little bit of adjustments to make that into a rectangle. 
All right, I was gonna go through a proof on rectangles here, but I think I'm actually going to skip that one. It might be a good proof to go through on your own just to see if you can. This might be one we do in class. All right, rhombi, that's the plural for rhombus. Again, the definition is that a rhombus has all the sides congruent. It also has some special properties. First off, it's a parallelogram. So it's got all the properties of a parallelogram, right? It's just a special type of parallelogram. In addition to that, the diagonals are perpendicular. So if I drew those diagonals in, they are gonna make 90 degree angles. And then the last property of a rhombus, the diagonals are angle bisectors. So not only are the diagonals perpendicular, but they also cut the angles in half. So this angle and that angle are gonna be the same. Same thing over here, this angle and this angle are gonna be the same. And over here, and over here, those diagonals are gonna cut the angles exactly in half. Now you'll notice the way I marked them. I marked these two the same as those two. That's because it's a parallelogram, opposite angles are also equal. So not only does that diagonal cut it in half, but they were equal to begin with. So all four of those are equal to each other. These opposite angles are equal. So those two are gonna be equal to those two. All right, last one is a square. Square, the definition has, it's all equal sides and all equal angles. It's got a few properties as well. Namely, it's a parallelogram. So if all, it has all the properties of a parallelogram, it's a rectangle, so it has all the properties of a rectangle, and it's a rhombus, so it has all the properties of a rhombus. Basically, if it can be true about any of them, it's true about a square. In a rhombus, you have diagonals being perpendicular. Diagonals are perpendicular in a square. In a rectangle, you have, what's one of the rectangle ones? Diagonals are congruent. In a square, diagonals are gonna be congruent. They're all true for squares. All right, we're gonna work through a couple of example problems and then that's the end of this video. All right, here we go. So let's find X, Y, and Z. My bad, I should have mentioned that this shape is a rhombus. The shape below is a rhombus. All right, so I've gotta find X, Y, and Z. X, one of the properties of a rhombus was that the diagonals were angle bisectors they cut that angle exactly in half. If it's cut exactly in half, X is gonna to have to be 30 degrees. They're gonna to have to be the same. So X is 30 degrees. Y. Again, one of the properties of a rhombus has to do with its diagonals. The diagonals in a rhombus are perpendicular. Perpendicular means 90, so Y is 90 degrees. You might notice that I'm using these properties up here a lot. So having these properties handy might be really useful. Last is Z and it looks like Z is gonna be hard to find, but if I could find this one, I'll be able to find Z because those are, because this diagonal would be an angle bisector, Z and that other blank are gonna to have to be the same. So see if you can find a way find this one right here. Here's a hint. In a triangle, all the angles add up to 180. So I know if I add those angles up, 30 plus 90 plus whatever that blank is, I know that'll have to equal 180. Let's see here, 30 plus 90, that's 120. Oh, I'm gonna need 60 more. 120 plus 60, that's 180. So this one is 60. If that one right there is 60, so is Z. Again, because diagonals are gonna bisect that angle, which means that six Z and the 60 are gonna to have to be the same. All right, one last example. Uh, example, LN is equal to four X minus 17, MO is equal to 2x plus 13, what are the lengths of the diagonal of rectangle L, M, N, O? So I know this thing is a rectangle. It's asking me how long 
those diagonals are. So that one and that one. Well, the one in green is LN, which is right there. The one in yellow is MO, which is right there. I know in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. So those things must be equal to each other. 4x minus 17 must be equal to 2x plus 13. Let's do a little algebra to figure out what x is. If it were me, I would probably subtract 2x from both sides first. I can get rid of the x's from that side. I'd get 2x minus 17 equals 13. To get rid of that minus 17, I would add 17 because then those go away. And I get 2x by itself equals 30. And then last, I need to get rid of that 2. Well, I can do that by dividing by 2. Those 2s go away. And x is 15. All right, let's make sure we answered the question. The question asked us, what are the lengths of the diagonals? All right, well, I found x. x was 15. But the diagonals are these lengths here. So how am I going to find those? Plug the 15 back in. If I did ln, I know ln is equal to 4x minus 17. But now I know what now that I know what x is, I can plug that in for x. Instead of 4 times x minus 17, I'm going to write 4 times 15 minus 17. I could plug that into my calculator. I think I can do this in my head, though. Let's see. That's 60. 60 minus 17, that's 43. There's my answer. If I wanted to be sure that I was right, I could plug it into MO as well. MO is 2x plus 13. Before we do plug it into MO, you should be able to predict what you think you'll get out for an answer. All right, if we did this right, we better get 43 out for an answer. Why 43? Well, because I know the diagonals need to be congruent. So let's find out if we did. If we get 43, we know we did this thing right. All right, MO is 2x plus 13. In this case, I've already found x is 15. So 2 times 15 plus 13. 2 times 15 is 30 plus 13 more. Yep, that is 43. We were right. That's the assignment. That's it. That's it. The assignment is worksheet 6.4, special parallelograms. When you do this assignment, it, that worksheet is going to be really handy to have these definitions and properties um, somewhere nearby. So make sure you have that written and you can look back and check out these properties so that when you get stuck, if you're not sure of something, you can look back and be like, oh yeah, diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus. Or maybe you're looking at a square and you say, well, it's got all the same properties of all these other ones. So maybe go back and make sure you have the have some good notes available for you.